Hi everyone and welcome, this is The Apostate Prophet. I'm a little bit sick right now, but I want to get through with what I want to talk about today. When I was religious, I also thought there was something uh, good about being sick and going on. It was kind of a pious thing. And Allah would be proud of me. Of course, not as proud as he would be if I went out to wage war and gather some sex slaves. Anyways, today I want to talk about the Muslim sleepers. No, I'm not talking about the amazing inefficiency of the sleeping Muslim world. And I'm also not talking about the virgins that you can sleep with in heaven, as tempting as it may sound to some primitive men. I'm talking about a group of men who miraculously slept for centuries in a cave a long time ago. There is a prominent Islamic story about a group of men and a dog. The story is called Ashab al-Kaf, the people of the cave, or the companions of the cave. I should call it the cave people. They lived in a city in a time where people used to worship false gods besides Allah, and people who believe in Allah would be persecuted. One day, this group of people was in trouble, and in order to save their lives, they fled to a nearby cave where they wanted to spend the night. They all slept at once, and once they woke up, they started asking each other how long they slept, and they all thought it was just a few hours. But they felt very hungry, so they decided that one of them should go back to the city to buy some food. Why he goes back to the city that they just saved their lives from just for food is beyond me, don't ask me. But once the man arrives in the city that they had just fled from a few hours ago, he finds that the city has changed. It is a different place, all the buildings are different. There are different symbols, symbols that stand for the one God. He tries to buy food, but people don't accept his money, and soon he finds out that 300 years have passed, and people now worship Allah. He's amazed, the people are amazed. So he goes back to the cave and they all fall asleep again. And the people find them and argue about what to do and eventually they decide to build a place of worship over them. The end. When I was young and I heard this story and the miracle, I was fascinated. I loved this story. I even watched a movie about this whole story that was half a day long. It was thoroughly, undoubtedly a true story. It is so important, this story is even told in the Quran, in the chapter Kaf, the cave. Since the Quran is very disorganized, the chapter is 110 verses long, and only 15 verses are about this story. But let's just put that aside. We all know the Quran is the best book in the world, because it says so, so many times. If this story turned out to be just a fairy tale, that would mean that Islam, that, that can't be true. Islam is the truth. And if you deny that, you should burn in hell. What is interesting about this story, however, is the origin of this story and the way it appears in the Quran. When I communicated more with Christians, it surprised me that Christians have no idea about this story. Upon further research, I found out that this is a story, a tale, that Christians apparently used to tell. And that Islam seemingly adopted this story in a very vague and weird way from some Christians. We find the first written record of this story in the 5th century, written by a Syrian bishop known as Jacob of Sirug. The story appears in some other sources throughout history, especially popularly in the writings of Jacobus the Varagin. The actual story is about seven young men who lived in the Roman Empire, in the city of Ephesus in today's Turkey, in the time of Emperor Decius, who reigned from 249 to 251 AD. This historically corresponds with what is now known as the Decian Persecution. When Decius became emperor, he issued an edict ordering everyone in the empire to make a sacrifice to the Roman gods in order to legitimize his rule. Although Jews, for example, were exempt from this, Christians were not because they weren't yet recognized as a religion. They were often regular Romans. So their refusal to make a sacrifice was seen as an act of disobedience and a threat to the unity of the Roman Empire. Pope Fabian, who was the bishop of the time, was arrested for his refusal and died in prison. This brief period of intolerance and persecution was remembered among Christians for centuries. According to the story, these seven men who lived in Ephesus at that time refused to make a sacrifice and fled the city. They then stayed in a nearby cave. The emperor Decius, who happened to be in Ephesus at the time, thought about what to do to those seven men. So he decided to shut the entrance of the cave and to let them starve to death. It is highly dubious to me that the emperor himself would deal so specifically with these men, but that's just me. From there, the story goes a few centuries into the future, to the time of Emperor Theodosius II, who ruled the empire from 408 to 450 AD. Theodosius was a Christian, and by that time the empire had officially converted to Christianity. 
In his time, there were also apparently some theological disputes and a growing heresy of people, claiming that dead bodies couldn't be resurrected, while the dominant idea among Christians was that dead bodies could be resurrected. Unrelatedly, Theodosius or someone else apparently ordered his men to establish a building on the mountain that that cave was found on. While working on it, the men apparently opened the cave for some reason. And for some weird reason, they also didn't go inside the cave and didn't look inside it. They just left it. The seven young men in the cave woke up and thought that they had just slept for a few hours. They were hungry, and one of them, named Malchus, weirdly went to the city to look for food. To his surprise, the city was completely different. There were crosses everywhere, which surprised him and made him happy. He asked what city this was and learned that it was Ephesus. He was shocked. He saw that people were now talking about God, about Jesus, when just yesterday no one believed in God. Soon he was brought in front of the bishop, who asked Malchus who he was and where he got those coins from. Malchus explained that he is from this city and that they had just fled yesterday, from the emperor Decius. Of course, no one believed that. He then brought the bishop and other witnesses to the cave. So the bishop and others went to the cave and found the other six people in the cave. Astonished by this miracle, realizing that those people had actually slept there for centuries, they called the emperor Theodosius II, who came to witness this for himself. Seeing that these men had been dead for centuries and were suddenly resurrected, the emperor and the bishop declared that this is a miracle which proves that dead bodies can be resurrected, which ended the heated debate about whether resurrection is true or not. So this miracle happened just in time, and the whole debate about the resurrection was now over, and Christianity was again safe. Afterwards, the seven young men went back to sleep because they liked the cave so much, and they wanted to be resurrected again by God when the time comes. The emperor then told people to adorn that place with precious items. The end. If you want my honest opinion about this story, I think it is complete nonsense. But that's just me. I have so many issues with it. Like, why would Emperor Decius deal so strictly and specifically with some seven men from Ephesus and even shut the entrance of a cave on them instead of just imprisoning them like he did with all the other Christians? If the men went back to sleep in the cave and their place was adorned, where are their bodies? The cave is actually there, near Ephesus, Turkey, and there are inscriptions and some objects in honor of the seven sleepers, but of course no actual trace of them. Ironically, Muslims believe that all of this didn't take place in Ephesus, but rather somewhere in the Middle East. Early Muslim scholars claimed this was in Jordan, and guess what? There is a cave that Muslims are also sure is the cave in question. It has objects and inscriptions. Muslims perfectly recreated the cave, so it's actually easy to do. And of course Muslims think it was a cave in Jordan because that is closer to Arabia, whereas the cave in Ephesus is closer to Constantinople, the Roman Empire. Then there is a number of other caves in Turkey that are also claimed to be the cave and have objects. This all, all of this just really looks like a legend with no truth. Also, if this huge miracle had indeed happened and even been witnessed by the Emperor Theodosius II himself, it would surely have been found among the historical records of the Roman Empire and among other important historical documents, instead of written down by some Syrian bishop who wrote this legend very poetically, which is typical of fantastical tales in Middle Eastern cultures. On top of that, Jacob of Seruk, the Syrian bishop who recorded this story, was born decades after these events supposedly happened. This story did apparently become widely known among Christians in the empire, but seemingly it only spread due to hearsay and these poems and legends. We have no other source besides that. What is very confusing and curious is that according to the original story by Jacob of Siruk, the men slept for 372 years. Yet only 150 to 200 years passed between Decius and Theodosius II. Other sources that adopted this story, such as Jacobus de Voragine, also point out that this detail makes no sense. It looks like the original author of the story didn't know the time frame between Theodosius II and Decius. All in all, this looks like a 
legend, like a folk tale, that Protestant Christians largely disregarded as an old legend that doesn't very well unite with Christianity and reality. Coming to Islam, this gets very bad for Islam. What seems to have happened here, why the Quran adopted this story, is that Christians in Muhammad's environment probably told Muhammad about this story. The Christians who told Muhammad about the seven sleepers apparently didn't know about the number of the young men. Which is why the Quran says that they were three or five or seven and they had a dog. Suddenly there is a dog. And that Allah knows best about their number and few people know. For some interesting reason, the all-knowing Allah doesn't tell us about the exact number of the people, despite the fact that the written sources clearly say they were seven. But those people who talked to Muhammad probably didn't know. It just looks like someone has just heard this story, with conflicting numbers, and that someone is not really sure what to say about it. Why doesn't Allah just tell us the number? We find the number in secondary sources. Further, the Quran doesn't tell us anything about these young men, such as why they fled, where they lived, in what land they were, in what time they lived, who ruled over them. All these details are known in written stories. It doesn't tell us their names either, although we know their names from Christian sources. It only says weird stuff like, we turned them around in their sleep, and if you had seen them, you would have fled in terror. Okay, Allah. <laughs> Weirdo. Funnily enough, the Quran also tells us that people keep arguing over how long these people slept, and that Allah knows how long they slept. 300 years, and added 9 years. So, 309 years. So, the Quran refuses to tell us how many they were, but it tells us they slept for 309 years, which is a very weird number, by the way, and is of no use to anyone at all. Thanks for the information. I'll just put this in my pocket. Thank you, Allah. See how they were either three, or five, or seven people, and the number of years they slept in the cave was 309, by the way. Odd numbers are prominent in Islamic stories, and it just sounds so much like bullshit. Leaving aside the fact that this section of the Quran is very poorly written for an informational text, and very agonizingly incoherent, because the Quran is written in impractical Arabian poetry, the Quran actually makes a mistake in telling this story. It tells us that the people in the time of the seven sleepers took deities besides Allah. This is a dominant Quranic reference to the Arab polytheists and to Christians, who according to Islam believed in Allah but also in other gods. They take gods besides Allah. But Romans didn't take gods besides the one God. Romans believed in the Roman gods and didn't have the one God at all. But Muhammad didn't know that of course. He barely understood Christianity and Judaism. Speaking of the belief in God, the Quran's adoption of this story is actually an own goal for Islam. Islam rejects Christianity as a perverted belief. It condemns the cross, promises hell for those who believe that Jesus is God and the Son of God, and orders to subjugate Christians until they accept Islam. In the actual story of the seven sleepers, however, God makes these young men sleep, then he wakes them up and shows them to the people as a miracle. And what the young men see as they go to the city of Ephesus is crosses. Crosses at every entrance of the city. They are happy that people now worship the one true God. And the Emperor Theodosius II, who is a Nicene Christian who believes in the Trinity, comes and prays together with them to Jesus. If this story is true, then Allah actually shows a miracle and makes these people together rejoice in a belief and a form of prayer that the Quran later strictly rejects and condemns and promises eternal hellfire for. What the hell, Muslims? <laughs> in fact, many Muslims notice this inconsistency, which is why they then desperately say that they don't know when this story occurred, and that it might have happened long before Christianity. And that again wouldn't make any sense, because this story was only invented, the story only came out in the 5th century, in the Roman Empire, about the Roman Empire, one century before Muhammad. In the original story, it actually serves a purpose. In the Quran, it is just 15 lines of weird rambling, and Muslims are left looking at Christian sources to complete the story. Perverted Christian sources. This is a big blunder in the scripture and the theology of Islam, and it shows us again that the Quran is the product of an ignorant 7th century merchant called Muhammad, who didn't even understand the religions that he copied his stories from. 
which he would then call the perfect word of Allah. Muslims who believe in this story have been fooled. I was fooled. Islam is foolish. Don't give it any respect. It is pathetic. So stupid. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to help the channel, please don't forget to like, to subscribe and to share. Most of my videos are not monetized, so you can watch them without ads. If you want to support me at my work, you can also support me on Patreon. I would appreciate it so much. Or on apostateprofit.com. You can find the links below in the description. I'll be back very soon. Until then, have a great day and stay away from Islam.